Welcome to August 18th, 2022, meeting of the Hingham Historic Districts Commission. This meeting is called to order as of 6.33 p.m. <clears throat> this meeting is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access, pursuant to an order issued by the governor of Massachusetts, dated March 12th, 2020. I think that date has been changed, but suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. And in fact, it is being recorded. Um, there are only three items on the agenda today. Continuation of 194 North Street, <clears throat> um, 219 Main Street is back and a continuation of 667 Main Street. Um, voting members are Justin, Carol, Catherine, Daniel, and myself. Are there any conflicts on any of those three? All right. No, no conflicts. Nope. All right. <clears throat> so we have a new alternate member as of tonight, Josh Blevins. If you'd like, I think we've seen you before on the other side of the Zoom. Very recently. <laughs> if you'd like to give us a, a brief uh, introduction. It's uh, it's nice to be back. I, I came in uh, to the uh, Historic Districts Commission uh, on as a uh, as was mentioned on the other side, I went in to make an application for Windows. Uh, Andrea charmed me into joining the board by the time I had left. Um, so happy to, happy to be here. Glad to have you, Josh. And I, I had the same experience, so I know what charm you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. We're glad to have you. Glutton for punishment. <laughs> Well, Andrea, I don't see the first applicant. I do not see the librettes, um, which is kind of a surprise. I don't know why. Um, well, and while we uh, wait for their arrival, uh, I believe there's just one uh, document. Uh, so, submitted for 194 North Street is if I some it's uh, the application with some photographs. Okay, I'm going to try and phone them. Uh, you can all if you want to just go over the minutes. Yeah. Um, Andrea distributed <clears throat> minutes from the last meeting, 72822. Are there any comments or corrections on those minutes? Is roof lines one word? <laughs> <laughs> so far, that's my only observation. Never put an Ivy Leaguer on a commission. That's my <laughs> motto. <laughs> Very bad idea. <laughs> I think content wise, it, it, I don't have any, uh, find any discrepancies that I can detect. Are there any other comments? No, nice job. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from 728? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Daniel, how do you vote? Abstain. Catherine, how do you vote? Aye. Carol? Aye. Justin? Aye. It's an aye for me. It's a motion. Uh, minutes are approved. Um, so far, I haven't had any luck. I'll give it another shot. Um, our second hearing begins at, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. What time, Tracy? 6.50. Okay. I see so, uh, Mr. Papich here. I see Attorney Mr. Danahy. Mr. Danahy. 
Okay. Um, let's see. Josh, why don't you just tell us about yourself since <laughs> we have time? Well, I, I mentioned a little bit last uh, in the last meeting. I'm a, uh, a real estate developer. I do a lot of affordable housing. Uh, I have historically done almost... Um, almost completely historic uh, redevelopments, a lot of adaptive reuse projects. Um, I actually came to Massachusetts uh, chasing a, a historic building in, in Lawrence, uh, an old 550,000 square foot wool mill that we just completed the, the first phase of. Um, and uh, I did a, a rehabilitated a 20 story uh, hotel um, the uh, 1920 something uh, Thomas Jefferson Hotel in Birmingham, Alabama. Wow. Um, that was uh, my tallest uh, historic rehab uh, that I've done. Um, but uh, uh, it's 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 How really fun tall work. How tall was it? Do I'm sorry. How tall was it? Uh, uh, Twenty stories. Twenty stories. Wow. And there was a uh, there was a mast on top of the building. Uh, at the time, they thought that dirigibles uh, were were the next, uh, you know, the 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 electric cars of of uh, of the you know twenties and thirties, and they have a, a large mast that that was on the building, and we got to reconstruct a portion of that mast. Um, so that was, and it was lowered in by helicopter. So there's some great pictures out there. Um, What's a dirigible? Dirigible. Uh, a, a, a dirigible, a, a, a rigid airship. Um, a lighter than air, yes. rigid aircraft. What is the word? I think it's dirigible. Um, think Hindenburg. Yeah, think yeah, Hindenburg. Like Hindenburg. I was going to mention yeah. that, but I thought Dirigible. Yeah. Is that what it's called? A dirigible? Dirigible. D E R I G I B L E. Dirigible. I think blimp also works. Yeah. Blimp. That's easier for me. I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, is, was your Lawrence project the stone mill building with the uh, chimney? I, it was not the stone mill building. Uh, okay. It was part of the Pacific Mills complex. Um, so I know that building well. I know all the mill owners now in town. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that. It's, it's a neat club of people. They're also <laughs> endless up there, Lawrence oh, yeah. and over. That's great. Is your degree in architecture or something different? What uh, in politics, uh, actually. Oh, you're perfect for this. I, I, perfect. I started working in, in government. Um, uh, I chaired uh, a public uh, board down in Arkansas uh, when I was, that's where I'm from originally, and um, got involved doing affordable housing. And, um, you know, the rest is, is history. So. Wow, that's expensive. You were appointed to a governor's um, commission. There, there, uh, the state board of private career education, which which oversees all of the the non um, the non two or four year schools that that lead to some sort of degree or certificate that advances education. And there's there's far more of those than you would than you would imagine. Uh, mm -hmm. Far more schools. So it's everything from um, barber schools to uh, tattoo schools to yoga schools, not yoga um, uh, studios, but the, the schools that train the teachers. Uh, so there's, a, there's about, I think there are about 600 different schools of different types in Arkansas that we mm. regulate. Yeah. You don't have an accent, sorry. <laughs> that was not the case when I moved up here. I was, I was always told that uh, I did have an accent. <laughs> One thing that I learned when I moved up here is that <clears throat> I was in a meeting with a gentleman named Mike and a gentleman named Mark, um, and they were both attorneys working on our deal. And I learned that um, Northerners say Mark the same way that Southerners say Mike. It's identical, and it's just <laughs> Mike, um, which is how we Southerners say Mike. Mike. Uh, it's <laughs> on how you say it. We're lucky to have you. What a background. And there are no Marks or Mikes. So I think we're really <laughs> lucky. So that's handy. <laughs> that is very handy. Yeah. So I think um, it's 6.43. We've got seven minutes, um, but I don't think we're going to see um, 
the librettes, unfortunately. So I did they extend their application? No. So um, I've had no word from them. Uh, I sent out the agenda, so I'm going to have to call them. And they're going to have to, you know, extend their. And when does that application expire? I'll have to look at yep. the application itself, but they really need to. They'll they'll either have they'll have to extend it. So I'll. I mean, my my question is: July 28th was their second meeting. We left it up to them to decide whether to withdraw the application. Oh, I think you're thinking about uh, 667 Main Street. No, the librettes were new last time. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yep, replace existing windows. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that's the one we visited. Sorry. That's all right. Not a problem. Yeah, okay. there's lots <laughs> to think about. So um, do you want to proceed? Because I don't think um, anybody's going to be joining us who's interested sure. in. Can we start uh, five minutes early? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I see. See most of. Uh, I mean, we can ask if there's anyone here to witness the Labrette's hearing. I don't hear anything. So. Nope. Are all the parties here for the next agenda item? It looks like it. Mm hmm. There's Mr. Papage. See Mr. Donahue and Mary Catherine. All right, so first agenda item, we will leave to Andrea to reach out and see if they want to extend their application. This this was their continuation. That was on the replacement window. That yes. On North Street, so, okay. Hold on, I got a bunch of windows here. Next on the agenda is 219 Main Street. <clears throat> Noncompliance with approved hardscape plan. <clears throat> um, this is in reference to the flagstone wall front of the property. Um, Sean, Mr. Papich has sent some additional information earlier today to everybody. Um, do you want to present, Sean? Uh, good evening. This is Sean Papich at Sean Papich Landscape Architecture, 222 North Street in Hingham. And uh, John Dennehy's also, I see him on here, too. I, I'm not sure if, um, if I'm presenting or if we're just re reacting at this point. And it sounds to me like there's a question about uh, the wall and what you would received from me today and in my email at the wall of 219 uh, Main Street is that we um, we believe that it matches the approved photo. Um, what it is a uh, field stone veneer that is over block, which is one of the very common ways to, uh, to construct the wall. There are multiple ways to do that, but this is just one of the methods. Um, we feel that it matches the wall almost identically in, in the photo. We it's almost uncommon to match it that closely, to be quite honest. And and uh, and we so we feel that it does. So I'm not. I guess we didn't know. I know Mary Catherine was kind of wondering what is the issue. Um, and I I was wondering if it's whether or not there was some concern that it was a cultured stone or something like that. But it's certainly not that. It's field stone. It's been sliced. It's a very common product to use um, these days and for a number of years now. So you'll see it on chimneys and walls and grills and houses, house facades and everything else. So I guess the question is what the what is the non-compliance? And that's really how we want to, I suppose, open it up. And if John has some comments, he and I haven't had a chance to chat, but if he has some comments, John, of course, certainly jump right in there. So I think this wall has been brought to the attention of the commission by a few members of the Hingham community. Um, they saw it being installed as a CMU backup. I think the assumption was it was a true field stone wall. 
there are some additional field stone walls on the on Main Street <clears throat> nearby, just up the road a little bit. Right. Um, they look like they're full field stone. Um, stone looks a little different. Um, they actually don't look like they're necessarily mortar sat. This is mortar sat. Um, I do think that the you know the image that was in the previous application it looks pretty close to that you know but the veneer is is more of a tumbled stone so it has rounder edges rather than the the jagged or traditional um field stone set has the sean the one question i have for you is the final grading done or not no the final grading's not done yet so the, there'll be a little bit of uh soil brought up to the base of the wall there is um, <coughs> excuse me obviously some plantings going in front of it and some plantings going on top of it also. So, um, I mean, it's, we feel that and, it's photo. And Sean, isn't there also um, some granite curbing along the sidewalk that, that we're expecting? So there's some consideration to do the grant, extend that granite edging um, from the, uh, well, you know the granite edging, that kind of triangular wedge-shaped granite edging that sits at the edge of the sidewalk um, that's the first call first oh, 15, 16 feet, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe 24 feet of the property. They're having, he's having, uh, Frank's having difficulty finding that and kind of said, listen, the only way I can get there is if I find some cemetery that can give up some edging that looks like that. So if there is going to be some granite curbing going in or some edging, we're still going to have to find it. Um, is, so how does it how is it as it currently stands that the edging ends halfway in front of the property yeah the edging would just stay as it's been staying for yeah the last however many years if they find think, other I have, i'm sorry i have to interrupt for a minute somebody has something going on in the background so if you're not muted please mute yourself unless you're speaking yeah it's very okay? distracting it is distracting so So I maybe for, perhaps we should address the field stone and go back to the um, granite edging. I have a question. Um, if plans were approved that said full field stone wall, steps, et cetera, and <clears throat> that's what the district's commission approved, why wouldn't you have come back to the district's commission if you're fine? finding and i just recently looked for fieldstone and had no problem finding it why wouldn't you come back and say we need to change our plans why are you substituting something that was is directly was directly not approved by the district's commission i don't understand that well if you want me to answer that question i we have a new england fieldstone wall is what we described there so uh as i noted in my email today there are three ways to build that and, and you can do the block or concrete core with veneer a, a thick veneer a thin veneer all field stone you can do it with bulk field stone uh in rubble core uh there are many ways to build this and in this case the contractor went with block wall with veneer to get the look to match what we have on our photo and that's what we, I, knew. I did not we didn't say full field stone ball it says field stone wall there are many methods of building the field stone walls all of those walls on uh main street that you're talking about there's a mix of walls on main street frankly almost every one of them is different um some of those are uh almost all of those are not dry lay walls in fact the majority of those are not dry lay walls those are those are walls with grout in them and uh, with a mortar core. Most of those would be a rubble core uh, with grout in them. But a full stone, a full stone with a rubble core. I think some that's the disparity. Yeah some, may be, yeah, some may be and some may not be. I, we, we haven't been involved in, in every one of them. Yeah. Tracy, can yeah, I really ask stick out. I mean, veneer is veneer. Veneer is a fake it's, it's no 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 it's not no. tracy can i ask it's a not, question not sure 
Um, so, the, you know, the, the precedent that I see when I look at this and looking at the images, um, the image that I see in the application matches aesthetically and visually what is been constructed. Um, we we didn't dictate means and methods on how to construct it. As Sean said, there's multiple ways to do it. If it was an important thing as our as a committee that we wanted it to be um, constructed in a certain method, we should have included that in our approval. I don't see any notice of that. And it is pretty clear that it's just called out as a New England field stone. Doesn't specify if that's solid or, or veneer. I recently went through this on my house. I chose to do it the different the other way, um, just out of my own interest. Um, and you know, there, there's that clear distinction. The only question I have um, for Andrea or, or Sean or anybody, the photo that you have, Sean, it it looks like it's slightly wider than the house. The fine, but I, it might just be the angle. I'm not in town today to drive by and look at it after I saw that photo. Dimensionally, it looked off to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just, it's just based on the photo that you sent. So I just asked that question. Yeah, no, it, it lines up with the house, Dan. It lines up with the uh, sides of the house. So it's I think it's the angle, Mr. Clark. I, I, I looked at it because I haven't gone to see it. I'm going to take a look at it tomorrow because I'm going to be in Hingham. But I, I thought the same thing from the angle of the shot. It looks like it might be wider, but I believe it's just the angle that you're looking at. So. Yeah. One yeah. thing then, I would like to point out, though, that the, the the plan that we were presented says um, very clearly that there's going to be bluestone risers and there are fieldstone risers. It says which looks very um, inappropriate. It says, it says <laughs> bluestone okay. landing with fieldstone risers, is what it says. Bluestone? Bluestone risers. And it looks like oh, we have says, fieldstone risers. No, it says bluestone landing with fieldstone risers. Fieldstone risers. We, oh, so. We don't we don't usually say fieldstone uh, treads and bluestone risers, so we wouldn't have built it that way. So it's we we had bluestone and uh, treads and landing with fieldstone risers. Yeah. May I ask a question? Sure. Sean, what is the total height of it? Our our approval said thirty inches. Are you above that? We had two point five to three feet is what we had on our drawing. So two point five to three feet out that maximum point, which is on the far right when you're facing the house. Um, it hasn't been, uh, it hasn't been finished graded at the end yet. So that hasn't been completed. Is your goal to make 30 inches or three feet? Goal was to be, uh, yeah, three feet max. It might be a little bit shorter than that once all said and done with the way that grade feathers off there. Mr. Chair, so, just as a point of order, what exactly are we here before you? Is it for the, is, is it for the, the fieldstone concept, because I know we're talking about the height and everything. That's number one. Number two, you mentioned that members of the community. Um, I'd like to know who are we talking about? Because if somebody's, shall we say, making contact with the any town com uh, board and they're not giving your name other than anonymous, that's not really helpful to you or to us or to the public if nobody's going to put their name to the issue that they're raising. And so that's the second question I have, because frankly, if they're not willing to tell us exactly what they think was wrong, they're putting you folks on a goose chase right now, a wild goose chase to try to figure out what the issue is. And, you know, I, I think that's imperative that we we and the public have an op, op, you know, should know who are the people who are the complaining that raised this issue. And two, what are we here for? Is it is it the field stone? If that's the issue, because I, I will say to Ms. Daly's point, I thought maybe it was because of the rendering that was submitted in October 7th, 2021. The rendering doesn't show the field stone on the risers, but it clearly defines right with it. It says blue stone landing with field stone risers, and it points directly to the steps. So we were not trying to, um, shall we say, um, hide anything here or be deceptive. It was in the plan, and that's what Sean submitted. No, I see the note of the fieldstone riser and the bluestone tread. <clears throat> um, I think the main issue is just the how the wall was constructed with the CMU backup rather than a full fieldstone. Thank you. Um, well, I don't know. Andrea can add anything as to. Um, yeah, I have to say I did. I looked at no less. I looked up fieldstone 
fall construction. And I watched three or four different videos and not one of them talked about a, you know, concrete block and attaching a veneer. They talked about building a field stone wall. And so um, when I, when we see that called out and you've been before us a number of times, Sean, what? and you know, you also said that once the plan was approved, you were on to other things. And so I don't know. Um, and I asked you, I said, did the, the wall builders have the plan available to them? And you said, yes, they did. So somewhere along the line, someone made the decision to use concrete block and put in um put a field stone veneer on and i think that's unfortunate because we don't approve we don't let people put up uh pretend chimneys faux chimneys um you, you know, would approve or, but you would approve andrea you would approve field stone veneer on a chimney and you'd approve and you would approve field stone veneer on the base of a house and you'd approve it on the base of a carriage house and on the base of a barn. However, but that's a different. That's completely different. I don't know about. No, it's not. It's not. There, Sean, it's, come it's, on. We're talking about what was represented, and what was represented was a field stone wall. And the reason, you know, we talked to you about the fact that this this whole house um, and property was supposed to fit into the neighborhood and be very. Uh, more of a rustic look and um, it has not um, quite achieved that but nevertheless it just is you know putting something up that doesn't it doesn't fit in the, it's the not wall, appropriate it, it matches the photo that we showed in that it was matches the, that the was material the but no that that it matches the material that was stated but it doesn't match the description the description that was given was a field stone wall the material yes those <clears> were field stones were appropriate but they were field stones not field veneers and i believe that you know we're left now with a situation where another another liberty was taken in creating I don't, I don't that's, a, that's actually be... inaccurate okay they put on the uh, sean put on the plan clear as day Field stone risers and also field stone retaining wall. Except the risers folks, are depicted you folks, incorrectly. You folks are not masons. You don't build stone walls. To, to Mr. Clark's point, if you want to be specific and say we want full field stone boulders to be built for walls because you're the historic commission, because you want certain types of material, you need to clarify that because it's totally unfair to every applicant that comes before you that they need to now figure out whether you want field stone, hand-built stone walls by particular people who build stone walls, or shall we say in this case, we have stone walls. This Mr. is from Denny, Plymouth Quarries. No, let me finish Sean my point. Sean Papich has been I'm a, a, I'm not a, been a, a landscape planner. architect in I this I want to finish my point, Ms. Daly, because you've spoken, and it's my time to be able to at least reply. You folks need to be clear as to what you want. You can't have us be, try to like determine like now you want us to say a full field stone wall. They put the visual. That's what you want. You want it field stone. They put field stone, whether it's a half a stone or a full stone, providing it is not seen as a half a stone, which you're not going to see. The wall is a wall. What does it matter? Because they're actual stone walls. There's they're a actually big difference, stone. actually. Not plastic. Big difference. Not There's a very difference. big difference. It's a huge difference. difference. You know what? You folks are ridiculous if you're going to say it's a big difference. Oh, Mr. You know Dennehy, come on. Oh, I respect you, know, you more than this that. Is, this has been an the issue. Call is ridiculous. You said this house is like, uh, 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 shall we say, it, it's not rustic. It is a colonial house. It is white. It has no, fields. No, it's not colonial. It's a Cape Cod. Can you yeah, please? It's a Cape Cod Cape, okay? Mr. It's a Denny, colonial house. I, mean, I am sorry, but I object to the fact that you tell us we're being ridiculous. Well, you Can are being ridiculous. Can we just conduct this in a, in a manner that is uh, civil, where we can talk and have op express opinions? We don't need name calling, sir. Well, 
I'll tell you right now, it's field stone, whether it's a full field stone or half field stone. That's what's showing. That's what people see when they drive up and down the street. But I, I drove up and down the expensive. street. When I drove up and down the street before this ever came up before the commission, I thought, oh, my goodness, what's wrong with that wall? No joke. I bulged in a way that didn't look right. I turned my head to the right to the little cottage, which is Fieldstone, has a Fieldstone foundation. And I thought, that's a real Fieldstone wall. My feeling is when you say Fieldstone, if I go to the quarry, I say Fieldstone. I want them to give me Fieldstone. If I say Fieldstone veneer, I want them to give me a Fieldstone veneer. Um, there's a big difference. They're not synonymous. And that house looks like it has something wrong with it because it's not a full field stone in keeping with the rest of a lot of the properties along that area of Main So you're saying, Ms. Donaldson, because it has half a stone, there is something wrong with it. You're telling me, I want this for, for testimony. You're telling me that a court is going to say that you can't see the other half of the stone. And you're saying you can tell the difference. Mr. Dennehy, it's not but just I, the I, stone. Excuse me, it's not just the stones. The stones actually are field stones sliced into parts. However, it's the grout lines, it's the mortar lines that there aren't any mortar lines. And these stones are tumbled in a way to fit together in a perfect puzzle. It is an unnatural and mm. uh, very Disney-like effect. Thank and, you. And, and that is what we're kind of, we're we're here to um, enforce the guidelines and and interpret the guidelines as best we can. Things that are appropriate in keeping with the neighborhood and keeping with the styles that exist in the neighborhood, which which that is our that is our charge. But what's so, the guide? What's the regulation? What's the bylaw? What's the guideline that says specifically fieldstone shall not have mortar in between? Can you reference that? Where, where in your guidelines does it specifically say that? Because that's what you- I'm you're not sure that's relevant. It doesn't that, say no, that. Of course it's relevant. You're taking my client saying that they're not complying and we're you don't need talk... regulations that say that the they have to comply. The overall style and feeling of this wall and that's subjectivity. not appropriate. That is subjectivity okay. that you're suggesting here. That is not codified. And if you're using subjectivity, your subjectivity to make a decision on walls, that's completely unfair because it's arbitrary. Our job is to Whether interpret as best we can run as of citizens that. of Hingham, the guidelines, to interpret and interpret. Where the in guidelines. the guidelines are we referencing for the stone wall? I, 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 I'm i sticking to preserve that. Preserve the streetscape, that's preserve the streetscape. Okay, Sean, The guidelines go ahead. say preserve the streetscape. Let's, that's let's, what let's let Sean talk. I'm sorry. Go ahead. If I, if I could just speak to it, what, what we did is we had an image that we proposed and um, and the stonemasons matched that image really, really closely. Now, no natural product is going to be exact, right? Nothing is going to be exact. And you actually can't even expect somebody to match the image even as well as they did, but they actually really matched that image that we proposed. And so I think that at that time that we proposed it, God, we had so many hearings about this about this wall. We had four or five hearings. I've never heard that before. That mean about this wall, right? And I know a lot of it was a little bit of I know a lot of this about being vindictive and coming back. I know more of it was it was a lot more of it than just about the wall. I know it was about other things too. But it was about for me, it was about the wall, right? And so we had so many meetings with that, and that photo was out there every single one of those hearings and then stuff. I remember even dropping packages off at, at folks' houses. So that photo was there in our in our set of images. Mm -hmm. And we're matching that photo for both the steps coming down and the wall. So I just don't know how. I mean, it, it, one of those five or however many meetings it was, four or five meetings for three or four months or whatever it was, um, at some point, Whoever has an issue with that type of a field stone, now I can tell you this: you wouldn't know the difference if that was a full field stone, and we still did the jointing in the same way. You would not know the difference. I I don't know that I would pick up on the difference, frankly. So I get the feeling, unless somebody is a, a master with stone, they wouldn't know it, and so you wouldn't know the difference. And so it is still real stone. It has been cut, 
So at that point, wouldn't you have said, you know what, John, I, I like this. This is a nice stone wall you've shown in these photos, but can you make it different than the stone wall that we're approving right now? Can you make it different than that stone wall? And that would have been the way to do that. But right now, after they built it, I don't know how you can come back and pick up on somebody for matching a photo that was approved by the board. And, I, and if I sat there, which I did uh, tw 19, 20 years ago, just like you guys, I don't know that I, if somebody came and matched that, I don't know that I could come back and tell them, yeah, you know, I said we want it to look like this, but now we don't even want it to look like this. So, Good. so Andrea, I don't know what to say, and I'm, I, I'll, I'll jump on. Good, Dan. Andrea. Can I ask a couple of questions? Sure. Um, I obviously wasn't part of the past on this, um, so I'm coming with some fresh eyes on it. And I think there is a very a discrepancy where the commission was assuming a full yield stone wall construction, um, but I don't think it was explicit as far as in the drawings. Um, if it was noted in the past meetings, I think that's a point of contention. Myself looking at these photos, if that original image was approved, by the commission that was actually discussed and that image would discuss. I, in my opinion, the, the install is as close as I've ever seen matching a photo. Um, whether it's a CMU backup or not, I think the aesthetic is captured very well. Um, driving by it and seeing it, the stone without the CMU, I would say the same thing. I think it's, unless it was explicitly discussed in the past about using full field stone I don't think it's fair to now tell them. I think maybe it's a lesson learned that that has to be explicit if that comes up, but that's my my thoughts on it. Well, I think it's unambiguous that a that a note on a drawing that says New England Fieldstone Retaining Wall is a a wall built in the fashion of a historic fieldstone retaining wall. And regardless of whether it looks exactly the same, I'm concerned about how this wall will age. And a veneer wall is, is vulnerable to potential falling off of adhered pieces of stone. I think it's just unambiguously different, a field stone wall from a veneered form construction. I'd like to add to it. I think it's ugly. I'm sorry, but when I drove by the first time, not only did I almost go off the road thinking, what on earth did they build? But it's just not. It's so regular. It almost looks like a painting that was then slapped up on it. Every stone is exactly too regular. It's been top tumbled, which gives a very different look to stone. I, I just think it's awful. It's not been tumbled. It's stone that's been cut. There's no tumbling involved with the, with the field stone. Yeah, so yeah one, uh, one other point, Mr. Chair, I'd wanted to raise. Um, Derek Stearns, the manager in sales of Plymouth Quarries, did submit a letter. I'll send it to you folks so you have it as part of the record. It says, to whom it may concern, the quarrying of the natural round field stone has been affected by labor shortage, production delays, and trucking. Uh, we saw this coming long before COVID. He said, natural round field stone comes in a bulk, pelletized, and thin veneer options. Any one of these options will give the look of round field stone as they are all quarried and culled from the same source of field stone. Due to these delays, we elected to go with the closest possible match by utilizing old redding veneer to achieve that round fieldstone look. And it was sent by Derek Stearns, Plymouth Quarries, Manager of Sales and Design. Thank you. Thank you. Dan. You're on mute. Yeah, a lot of what Eric said is is what I was going to say and, um, you know, probably a lesson learned. You know, I... I think this is to kind of think about it from a different perspective. I'm very sensitive to the windows when we have projects with windows and they call them out as, you know, um, you know, with certain terminology, I always explicitly ask for the cut sheet that, you know, very specific details of it because, you know, different manufacturers have different terminology for simulated divided lights and they, they're, they're not all equal. Um, I agree with, fellow Quincy members, I think we all sat there on that meeting thinking this was going to be uh, a true field stone, full depth stone wall. Um, but that onus is on us to unfortunately dictate that. If that's what we wanted, we needed to say that or clarify it. Um, and so, you know, it's a good lesson learned. Um, if that's how, you know, clearly there are strong opinions on what we would prefer. 
Um, and I think it's a good thing to think about when we go forward, when we're looking at these plans and making these approvals. Um, but in terms of the maintenance, Justin, I, I agree with you. That's why I chose to do my wall differently. Um, and, you know, that is, you know, up to the owner. Um, I'm not sure if that's really something that's on our purview is, you know, maintenance and main, uh, how it's going to be maintained. I, I hope it gets maintained. Uh, it certainly can be, it's more, you know, it's going to be a little bit more work. Um, but that's, you know, not up to us to decide. I don't believe unless, um, somebody corrects me on that. May I say, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> you know, I have, I have done this for a lot of years with a lot of um, changes on the board. And um, it has always been true that if someone represents something and um, then that's what they build. Um, otherwise, they come back. Don't shake your head, Sean. You didn't even listen to me. So the fact is that, um, you know, they, if you had to do a veneer for whatever reason, then you should have come back and let the board know and, and, and modify the approval. What is, if somebody uses veneer on a, um, on a uh, foundation, they always identify that it's been called out. We know it's veneer and we have approved veneer on um, on surfaces like foundations. But we take you at your word. You say field stone wall. It doesn't say veneer field stone. Why didn't you put veneer in there? Why didn't you put concrete block with a stone veneer? How come? We're not thinking of it as anything different, Andrea, and that's the point. And if I do want to shake my head, I'm going to do that. All right? We've been working together for a long time, Andrea. So we didn't misrepresent what the plan was. We showed you a picture. If you're going to do a fieldstone wall, you can do it one of three, four different ways. And I think I described those. Is emails. that picture veneer? Is We're, that a veneer stone wall that you submitted in the picture? Yes. And where is that? That's in Cohasset. You'll have to let us know where. Uh, it's a private property deep in somebody's yard. Really? Well, how do we know then that it's veneer? Well, you got to take him at his word. If you, if really? you trust him, Andrea, it's still beside the point. I'll we'll get an affidavit from the people in Cohasset. To Fine, say, good. Yeah, that's what you want. One but thing if, I would like to add at this point is that that letter kind of states that because we couldn't get real, real fieldstone, whole fieldstone because of shipping and whatnot. We, we decided to match it with veneers. That's exactly what it says in the letter. So, I mean, it seems like the intention was to have fieldstone and yet we decided to match it as best we could with veneers. I mean, I don't know where we go from here, but this feels like a very bad for people who really work hard to do their best and, and, and to work with people who have, you know, are presenting an honorable and, and, and true thing. It just feels, it feels uh, that's very upsetting, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what to say. The point is, on our end, is we equate the full fieldstone, the fieldstone veneer appearance with a full fieldstone wall. We equate that appearance the same a false equivalency. What's that? A that's a false equivalency. No, no, not... I mean, you're saying that now as one case you're speaking of, but if if we're working on projects, um, walls can be built in each of those different ways. And we don't necessarily say, well, then, especially something of the size three feet in height, um, something relatively small, um, if it's with block and fieldstone there, or if it's full fieldstone, we we don't usually make a huge distinction between them. It's more about the appearance of the stone. So an appearance of the pattern and the color and the stone type. So you can do it for any use. And again, just like foundation walls and just like these and things of, this, of a similar nature. Um, John, you know, I, I, I respect that. I appreciate that. I just want to know how come when I looked, um, I, I Googled, how to build a fieldstone wall. Not a single one 
came up with other than a true field stone wall. Um, if I looked up, if I wanted to say, uh, if I wanted how to build a veneer field stone wall, maybe I should have looked that up, but I didn't. I wanted to know how a field stone wall is constructed and nowhere, and you can do it yourself. There's nowhere that talks about putting a veneer on top of concrete block. I can't speak to that. I don't know, and I don't make videos about building. Who cares? You look it up too. You can do the same research I did. I don't really. I, I, I wanna, think at this point, though, now we have this disagreement. Where do we go from here? I mean, I. I want to point out one last thing to your point, Ms. Daly, and that is this: that this wall has cost us twice as much, and the reason is because they didn't have the stones to be able to build the field stone wall. So they opted to do something to make comply with what was approved, which means it cost them more. And to maintain that look, and that's the reason why they went forward with this. More but than it what? does not comply with what it was approved. It doesn't comply and it costs it more than comply. what? It complies. It it, what is it costing more than, more than, than, more than what? The cost what to build this is going to, it's costing the client more than if they had waited to try to get the field stones that are not available. The veneer would have a higher price than the bulk, just kind of right. Out of, out of a bin to match that that pattern, that color, that photo that we that was approved. Excuse me, I don't believe that the expense to the owner is any of our business. We're about what that looks like from the public right of way. And where do we go from here? Is the well, the, the, the thing is, in my mind, I think the issue is nowhere in any conversation that we ever had during any of the hearings was there talk about, oh, we're gonna use a veneer here. We're gonna put a concrete block up and put veneer. When, when somebody tells us they're gonna build a field stone wall, our expectation is that they're gonna build a field stone wall. If they wanna put veneer on a foundation, then they tell us that. Uh, this is really a first, I have to say. And Sean, I, you know, we've worked together for a lot of years yeah. and, you know, I just, I, I really think it's, you had admittedly said that you were not involved with the project at all. No, what I said is I hadn't, I hadn't been involved in when they were doing the construction on it. Um, right. That Frank had already been going, he's been following the plans and he'd been going on, but I hadn't been in the day to day with them on it. And I said to you, so they made the decision on site, knowing you said they had the plans. Of course. And they made the decision to go with the concrete block Correct. and, and you know, the veneer. But part so of is not a field stone wall. Let us know. But, you know, that's the whole thing here. But the, this was not what we approved. And if you want to come back for a modification, you are certainly welcome to do that. So anytime. So the the point that I'm making on this is we wouldn't we wouldn't change from what the plans say and go ahead and build whatever we want in because of the fact that we believe that a fieldstone veneer wall in the appearance of it is the same as a full fieldstone wall that we proposed in that photo in that photo matches. Now, if we were trying to get fiberglass wall might match if you were good enough fiberglass. What do you, think? <laughs> you, know, just but, you see, this doesn't hold this. This doesn't. This is unfortunate because we don't approve anything. We don't approve uh, pretend chimneys. We don't approve steel doors with a wood veneer. Um, yeah, Dan, I'm sorry, Dan, go ahead. I just wanted to one thing i did want to clarify is um from our guidelines and i think this is what this goes to this is the point ultimately which is sean's been working here a long time he knows how the commission feels about things um whether he knew or not i don't know but you know in our guidelines it says that stonework may be repaired replaced extended new stonework must be appropriate to the period of the character of the building artificial materials will not be approved veneers are subject to review so when I read that, it says that, you know, when they pivoted to veneers, they probably owed us, like you said, 
we need to pivot to Paneer's uh, veneer for the following reasons. Can the board or Andrew review it? Um, so I think that's the part that was missed. Whether it's appropriate or not uh, is the discussion. Aesthetically, I don't think any of us can deny that aesthetically the pictures do look really close together. Um, and so I think it's a nuanced detail of grout lines and, and things like that and the mortar lines. Um, but I do believe that we can all agree that, you know, when it was pivoted to veneers and that decision was made, we were owed that right to be notified and subject to review. And if you have a process available to do so. Josh, you look like you might have something to say. It sounds like a lot of this uh, has occurred prior to my time on the board. Um, I actually, you know, if I'm, I'm not a voting member, uh, if I, I do think that there is um, an aesthetic difference between what was approved and what was installed, I'm not quite sold as much as other folks may be that it's a it's a perfect match. Um, when I'm looking, when I think about a field stone, I think about uh, a naturally essentially a, a collected stone from the field uh, as the original walls were built. Um, and these look to me um, more like a, uh, a, a river stone, a tumbled field stone. They're much more round. Um, and to, to me, that is not what is intended by a field stone. I have less of an issue uh, with, uh, with uh, the the method uh, and uh, and the materials than I do that uh, the fact that it doesn't seem like a, a true field stone uh, appearance to me. But again, not a voting member, uh, and I was going to stay quiet because I, <laughs> this happened long before my uh, my appointment. I would also say there's those veneers are on the foundation, and I don't believe that was stipulated as well. I noticed that today, yeah. But on the foundation, it would be a veneer. They are. But it wasn't veneer. in the application. It wasn't on the drawing. And so it, it would be exposed concrete, or it would be a field stone. It field. wasn't approved to be on the foundation. So would you have preferred concrete because it wouldn't be historical? It doesn't matter what I approve, Mr. Dennehy. It wasn't on the application. It was a, just taken. It was just done. It was just done, just like this fieldstone wall was just done. No, the fieldstone wall wasn't just done. The intent was to match the photo. Felt like that was uh, the method used to match it with real stone, even if it's the veneer. Obviously, we have philosophical differences on how to get there. Um, That's true. But I will say that we are very clear in terms, we ask for natural materials. It is um, wait a minute. Let me finish. It's yeah, a process the, material. It's a, and there's a process. If you got to change from what you say you're going to do, then you come back and ask to modify because you have a rationale for that. That's that's the point. I'd be curious to hear what Sean would do to resolve the situation. How do you how do you think I'm gonna answer that one? How do you think I might answer that one? Take a take a guess, Catherine. I might answer that. I don't I I think if we match the photo, we're using real field stone. I really I think the resolution is that it is as it is, personally. I mean that's why I'm here. I think there's several ways to do this. I think there's several ways to to build stone walls, just like I stated multiple times and like I said in that email. Um and I, I think it's, it sounds very much philosophically, um, and because we work on hundreds of projects, uh, you know, seven or 800, 900 projects since we started the firm almost 19 years ago. So we, there's so many ways to build the stone wall that we're, the appearance to match the photo that was approved, I think that is what is important. I think that that's one thing that Frank, the stone base and Frank Candelari I think that's what they did. They worked very hard to try to get the closest match they could. And I think that's how it happened like that. Well, yeah, I, th I, I know when I voted on is... this, I wasn't voting on the photo. I was voting on the drawing. And if that's, yeah. Well, you got to vote it's on no the different. It's no different. We didn't have a different. 
So yeah, different. Can, yeah, there's no difference. We approved an entire package. We can't yeah, can choose yeah. what from that application we, yeah. we were approving. So um, I think I think I think we got to get this to a motion at some point. I I'm more in the boat of Eric and Dan. Of I think this is part of a lesson learned. Uh, we don't dictate means and methods. Um, and the motion would be whether what's installed is um, meets what we had previously approved or whether it needs to be um, remedied and built as a true field stone wall. I don't know how we deal with the um, veneer on the base of the building. I think the veneer on the base of the building is much more appropriate than exposed concrete and um i don't know how you approve veneer on the foundation and then not approve it on the cmu but um andrea do you know how to look you know the i think that to me it comes down to what was represented and what was eventually done. And if, I mean, we, this district's commission has a job to do. And that is to make sure that everything um, that we approve is appropriate and that it reflects the streetscape and fits in and um, we there's never been a time in our history that and in our in the guidelines in the also in the um, Secretary of the Interior's guidelines that's what we're here to uphold because that's that's don't Sean you just shake your head and you don't even know what I'm gonna say I'm listening. it's frustrating I'm listening. so but I'm trying to say is that I think there's just maybe there was a misunderstanding, but the fact is it was never represented as um, a veneer wall. And that is my problem with all of this. I think what was written, if it would have said on the plans, veneer, then great. If we approve that, then shame on us, but we didn't. We approve field stone wall, period. So um, that's what we were expecting. And I don't know whether the picture of the people's house in Cohasset, I mean, you've, you've done this for years. You've always presented us with pictures of things because something hasn't been built yet. And we've always appreciated that. And we've taken you at your word. So there was not once that I thought, well, that wall, maybe it's a veneer. Never. So I think we're really down to let's just, we have to tell the truth, you know, and the truth is that you know that we don't approve faux things. We don't approve, um, you know, other materials. It's not a fake cultured stone or anything like that. And no, it's not. We believe that this wall is is what I we know. is approved, and that's where it comes down to difference. If we, there would be several contractors would price it out and bid it and build it every different way. What we're going for is appearance at the end, and if it's real stone, then we're fine with real stone. If it were a cultured stone out of concrete, we would of course not do that. We don't feel we misrepresent anything. Whatsoever. There was no misrepresentation. Okay, that's Whatever. fine. But that's, you that's, have to admit, we never talked way. about veneer. That never, ever, ever came up in any yeah. conversation that we yeah. had. I, I think that's the trigger right there. I, I mean, aesthetically, there's a question here, but there's the the guidelines are pretty clear. Mr. Papich has been doing this long enough. He knows the guidelines. Um, you know, to me, that's the trigger that the when it needed to switch to veneer, the historical district commission was needed to be afforded the opportunity to review it as the guidelines say that that didn't happen we weren't afforded that opportunity we're now having a conversation on how we feel about veneer versus non-veneer after the fact with the ball that's already been constructed 
so to me, that's that's the conversation of, um, you know, it seems like should this be approved or not approved based on the VR? I don't I don't exactly know, Andrea, based on, you know, this is an agenda item that says, you know, um, for non-compliance with approved hardscape plans, I would say, you know, it's there is the non-compliance issue of, you know, a veneer was not so, it was not reviewed and it wasn't subject to review by our committee for the guidelines. If it was going to be a veneer originally, it should have been labeled that way based on the guidelines and how I read it. And so, you know, that's to me the motion that we're having here in the discussion. Is, Agreed. Uh, that's fair. That's I think fair, we're going in circles now. I think we've all expressed yeah. where the other one stands and everyone has spoken up about their thoughts. I, I think we're ready for a vote. But a vote on what, Andrea? Yeah. So th the remedy is, um, I mean, there there are several ways to look at this. One is to um, remove the existing wall and rebuild it with as a proper field stone wall. That's one thing. Um, the other thing is uh, to levy a fine um, if you wanted to go that in that direction. Um, so those are really only our three courses. Now I did say to you, Sean, when this first started, I said, I think you should advise your folks not to continue to build the wall. Did I not? Uh, I can't remember if you told me that or if I said that to you. No, 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 no. I said to you, I think they should stop work. You sent me an email back and said they've decided to continue. So, you know. I don't think I sent you a, an email saying decide to continue at all. Actually, to be honest, I don't think. Might I, I say there's I a third option. That. I have that. Might I suggest there's a third option here? One would be to rebuild it as a field stone wall. One would be um, to take it down and reapply with another plan. Perhaps there's no wall. Um, perhaps if the expense is too much, there's no wall. And we go back to a simple berm. Um, and then the third option would be, uh, I guess, a fine, although I have never experienced that. And it's so disappointing to even have to consider it. Yeah, I'm, that's not my, I don't see what purpose that really serves either, so. That doesn't help the neighborhood. No. Does it make sense for us to vote to approve it as it looks or not, and then have Sean come back to us with his suggestion of what he'd like to do next? So then the motion would be, um, are we going to approve the wall as built? And if not, then it has, you, you come to, back with something else. So depending on how the vote goes, or do we approve back, the existing wall? Or can they come back with the veneer wall just giving us the notification before they rip it out? Uh, Mr. Sh uh, Chair, I would certainly consider that, but I think the, the voting members are clearly against it. So that would be a waste of my client's time. I'd rather have a vote and then we'll go to court because I know where the vote's going. So let's find out just how much you folks believe that, you know, Fieldstone should be built based upon watching three videos, Andrea, or whether or not you should be able to build it. Fieldstone, which are Fieldstone that you folks are saying are faux. So let's no, get the vote up. No, I, don't, I, I think that's a misrepresentation. I think our, our, our decision on this is that it's pretty clear in the guidelines that a veneer stone veneer is subject to review. I guess I could pull up the exact wording, but. And I think Mr. Clark, we, that's what you're doing right now. I mean, I, I, I totally appreciate yeah. what you said earlier. I think you're right. If I'd known this, I would have said, look, let's take it. Let's go in front of you folks right away yeah. because it's subject to review, but that does not mean that you can change or shall we say deny. It's subject to review. And that's what we're going through right now. We're going through the review process. The voting members don't like it. They've expressed it. They said it's fake. It's it's Disneyland. Ugly. So this is the review that we're going through. And I don't want to go through another review, ask for modification, because we're going to have the same arguments 
And it's going to be basically, you know, people, shall we say, um, saying things about Mr. Papich that I think are completely un unreasonable. Frankly, it's a misunderstanding between the board, commission, and what happened here. I think that's really what the issue is. And it's a question of, is it a field stone? Does it, does it actually depict what was represented and what was voted on back in October of 2021? Everybody agrees it does look it, except for two board members who say it doesn't. I get it. But I mean, that's that's the issue. And I mean, I, I I mean, at this juncture, it's unfortunate, but I think we know what the writing on the wall says. So whether to vote or not is our business, our commission's business. We have to either approve this or not. Whether you it's want already to been approved. This has just been raised whether or not what was approved and what was built okay. is there. Yeah. And I know the Something alternates indicate that approved. it does appear to be there, but the voting members clearly have uh, stated it does not. Right. And Ms. Piles, you're one of them. Right. So, and Something you've been against this project from day one since yeah. I've been here. So yeah. you're just looking to vote against it for any reason. You're smiling. Um, and I just want to make sure you understand easy. that because I for wish this record was here. It doesn't change anything. Don't be rude. Uh, it does. It nice does. Your, your opinion on this has been well noted since the site <laughs> views and since the I past hearings. I certainly hope so. So, Andrea, the motion is to approve, approve the existing um, to approve the stone wall as built. And if it's no, then it either has to come down. Um, and I think that's probably the way we'll go. Or Mr. Denna, he is going to take us to court. Yep. I, I actually would. I understand where we're at and. Um, you know, I guess the question that was asked earlier is like, what what does a fine accomplish? And to me, it's like looking at a fine is being levied for not following the process, um, which is we should have been notified that this was going as a veneer and that that's the direction they wanted to go. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm just kind of throwing that out there. I don't know if that's, you know, what was not done correctly is that the guideline wasn't followed and we weren't notified. And to me, that's a findable offense, um, you know, not following the rules. Um, but um, so I, I kind of see two things here happening in parallel. Um, you know, I don't know if that's an avenue that we can take, um, which is to, you know, to make sure we have to do something as a commission to make sure people follow our guidelines and follow our rules. If we don't, um, this is the same conversation we had about people ordering windows and then telling us they have a hardship, right? We we have to be able to hold up the guidelines and do our commission job. And that's what I'm trying to figure out is, is there a path forward on something like that? I think that's very perceptive, Mr. Clark. I think there is. I think that's certainly one way of demonstrating for future applicants that in the event they fail to file or follow the uh, guidelines that that uh, the board will have that authority uh, precedent going forward. I'm not saying that I agree, but I'm just going to say I think that's something that preserves the board's integrity and the commission's integrity for um, for future applicants. So it seems like there's potential for two different um, motions. One is to approve the law as is, <clears throat> and if it fails, the remedy would be to remove the wall and build it as true flagstone. Um, the other is to um, approve the wall as is, but potentially discuss a fine for not um, notifying the board of uh, using a veneer in lieu of a, a true flagstone. The problem with that the problem with that option, Tracy, is that leaves the wall standing there. And the one thing we all agree on, it's not appropriate. It doesn't look right. I don't know if we all agree on that. I don't um, know that'll agree. be settled in court. Yeah. I think that's clear. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> can I ask you can I ask a question to and I to interrupt, but if it is to take down and we use full if we ultimately is is proposed that it needs to come down, but we come back with full field stone at some point when we can get that matching stone. So, uh, Carol, it's not going to look different. It's going to still look the same with a full field stone of the same exact field stone. 
it's not going to look any different than that. So if it was meant to be like a mixed granite, or if you guys wanted it to be some sort of like Pennsylvania stacked field stone or a different look altogether, or a, yeah, like I said, a mixed granite with something that's more horizontal or something that's more chunky and blocky, if the time to change that would have been a long time ago and get that appearance to look like that, even if it turns out to be like a, a field stone that is, even if we couldn't find that, a veneer that looks like that. But the appearance is going to look the same if it's But in it a, could be an alternate material. You're welcome to present an alternate material. Right. That's a possibility. Yeah, but- And you don't, yeah, but, not wait for the- You don't have to wait for the field stone. You could present a granite block or no, whatever. But, but my, point, my point is this, is if it's the same field stone, but full, it is the same appearance. Carol, and so when that's when you come back and say, "Well, it's just ugly," well, it's New England fieldstone, and so it would be the same appearance. And it is, is the reason to then take it down and put the same thing back up, but bigger stones or full stones. It's going Sean. There's much more variation in a natural fieldstone than what we've seen. The veneers are 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 a smaller, more uniform size, and they fit together like puzzle pieces. Uh, uh, it, even in your photograph, there's a couple of really large pieces in there that- few. So there's a, there are- That are natural, it gives it a more natural look. All right. So it seems to me the motion should be whether the existing wall conforms or not, and whether it should be replaced, and then we'll settle this in court. So does someone want to make a motion? I think it should be Carol, Justin, or Catherine. Go for it, Justin. Let's see. Uh, I'll, would it be a motion of non-compliance? Like we, that's so a, that's a, well, the existing wall, the wall um, as built, does not comply with what was represented in the. So plan. let me let me try this out. I'll say I'd like to make a motion that the wall that is currently constructed at 219 Main Street does not comply with drawings approved by the commission and remind me of the date that we did that. And we should we should specify the drawings that were, uh, let's see, I'm looking at- um, Let's see, I don't have that right. August 11? I think so. August a- uh, No, 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 it was October. No, it was October. It was October. Okay. Or pick the wrong pick the wrong plans. That's fine for me. I'm happy about that. Yeah. The plans were right. dated October seventh. Yeah. October seventh. That's correct. Thank you. Could you also include that the design materials images that also the photos because that's that's part of the package. That has to be the full package. That and, maybe, and include description. Correct. Verbal description. Whatever. The package. The entire application. The entire application. So I, uh, if you could help me out identifying the full package application that this What's, motion says is not complied with. And that application was dated October 7, 2021. Is there anything else to add that the wall should be replaced with true fieldstone or well i was saying it's maybe compliant. we take it one step at a time yep. no see what comes back as a different okay plan. is there a second second carol how do you vote the uh, i is for non-compliance i <laughs> justin i Catherine. you're on mute sorry i daniel no. And I abstain. Motion passes as noncompliance. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate it. Yeah. See you soon. So, Mr. Denner here, uh, did you, shall we, are you going to contact this office or? The yeah, you have to write a decision and it's got to be printed mm -hmm. and it should be submitted to the clerk's office yeah. uh, because if it's not, then um, the motion fails. So um, I'll be looking for it. 
Yeah. I may also add yeah. let's um regarding the the edging, the 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 granite edging that is proposed, if there's going to be a change we're past it, we're past it. That's I'm not, we're done. Over. not on the we're done. You've Hopefully made a decision. <laughs> Again, thank okay. you very much. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Next on the agenda, continuation, 667 Main Street. I see Jay Bradley is here, as well as Rogers. Yep. Mr. and Mrs. Rogers, so who wants to begin? Hi, everyone. I'll begin. I don't know why my video is not showing. Is just seeing a dark screen so far. Yeah, my. I apologize, my computer is a little bit slow today, uh, but I'm going to share my screen. That's great. Thank you. And there have been a lot of software updates over the past couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> there have. Can you see my screen? Almost, not yet. Heads, we see a message. I see a message that says Jay Bradley has started screen sharing, but it's still a dark. Okay. Image. Yeah, I see it scrolling, so it's loading up. Uh, okay. My robot, so. Ah, there we go. Great. Well, uh, we. Uh, my name is Jay Bradley. I'm a uh, principal at Jay Bradley Architects, and I'm representing the Rogers at 667 Main Street. Uh, this is our third, um, uh, second continuation, a third presentation. Uh, I know our last meeting was a little bit um, disappointing uh, from our perspective and a bit contentious, so I hope uh, uh, that doesn't weigh poorly on us. Um, my job is really to find solutions and I and uh, that is the the foundation of my um, career and I really think we have something here that um, potentially could um, uh, meet the requirements of the board and came, uh, comes back with a more um, amenable solution to what we had previously presented. Um, one of the things that clearly came, uh, from our last meeting was that uh, a two-story addition uh, specifically hiding the upper portion of brick on the left side of the addition was not at all uh, amenable. We're still coming back with uh, a two-story addition, but in this case, as you can see in the existing site plan, the single-story uh, uh, sun porch that is hold to the front of the building. We have now actually pushed it towards the rear of the building. This did two things. One, it um, really, it actually increases the brick uh, veneer from the street side and exposes more brick than is currently there because of the roof lines. And I'll, I'll show you that in the elevation. But it also, I think, in my, uh, does a really nice job at um, supporting the mass of the, the, the existing structure and not making it feel uh, too competitive with the existing structure uh, uh, and feeling like it's a little uh, much more amenable to the overall building footprint and facade. Uh, as you can see here in my uh, in the existing demolition plan we're calling for this existing sunroom and a a previous bay window that was attached to that sunroom to be removed. And now we are moving the sun porch towards the rear of the structure, exposing the, the uh, original window opening. I, as we had stated in our last meeting, we believe that these windows were placed in the 1960s during uh, a previous construction 
um, renovation. We will try to um, um, match the existing windows as much as possible. And, and um, of course, to maintain the existing historical look of the main building. Uh, but the existing, the new facade will be, a uh, new addition will be pushed away from the front of the facade. And you can see this is this, just the second floor plan. It's I know we don't uh, need to get into the details, but it still supports the footprint and adding that nursery to the uh, the main owner's suite and allowing them to uh, support their four children on the the main second floor, especially uh, Miss Rogers' uh, infant child. I think she's he's only two or three months old. Uh, this is uh, again just to go back. Um, this is the first floor edition that's current. Um, you can see the existing single double hung window here at the end and the brick facade uh, that's that's currently exposed. And you can see how close that is to the front facade. And so what we are proposing now is to move this towards the end and you'll see that now uh, the existing windows are in place. Um, this is based on our existing field measurements. I don't know if these two windows are in exact alignment because uh, there's an existing uh, sun porch that doesn't show them perfectly aligned. My guess is that they are, but uh, just based on my existing uh, field dimensions, it does show them slightly off. Uh, we can we can verify that once the demolition is in place. Um, and Mr. Bradley, can I interrupt just for a moment? As you go through, we, could you highlight the difference between option one, option two? I'm presuming you'll get to that. I will, and I'll move. Yeah. Uh, this is, sorry, this is option one. Uh, this is our preferred option. Uh, we like the 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 lesser of the windows at the upper story because it is going to be a nursery. We don't want too much glazing on that on that facade. Uh, one of the things what I talked about uh, last time was the, the hip roof engaging into the um, the chimney. And so we were really sort of uh, more uh, amenable to having the flat roof. So you didn't get that kind of connection point. This actually works really nicely because we can pick up the same roof line tied into the hip uh, appropriately and avoid any of the flashing or uh, connection points to the existing uh, chimney, which I think is a real, uh, a much better benefit to this option. Uh, you can see from the, from the uh, perspective here, now that it's pushed back, the prominence of the existing federal style uh, uh, structure is now real, a much more prominent and I think the overall massing of that uh, sun porch feels appropriate for the home, for the home. Uh, and this option here again, we can see we, we carry the double hungs. We pulled them together to distinguish the uh, this new addition. Uh, with we would like to do a field stone veneer. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just being silly. <laughs> you know, but isn't that fair pool on, on this on a foundation though? Uh -huh. um, I probably would have addressed that that issue previously a little bit differently, but uh, yeah, we would, <laughs> I'm assuming that's a uh, a stone veneer and that that would be appropriate. It would not be a full field stone round veneer um, unless you would want that specifically. We'd have to build a brick shelf and and. We appreciate the clarity. Yeah. <laughs> um, but again, I think you, you can see from the shadow lines here and from the front facade, the main house really is distinguished by itself. The addition is secondary and it sits back appropriately from the main facade. Uh, from the, the rear uh, elevation, and not that this is so much of a concern of yours. We're just doing a double door to the French door to the to the rear facade and two windows to take advantage of that uh, beautiful uh, yard that they have. What else can I share? And then these are just two additional perspectives. 
that needs. And this is all still option one. This is all still option one. Yeah, the preferred option just so happens. Yeah. Correct. Option two is a little bit less uh, or, or more consistent with the window placement of, of the existing. Sorry, I just lost that. Option two is a little bit more consistent by just having a single hung, double hung at the end walls. Feels a little nondescript for me, but I would, uh, I'll, I'll look to your, your expertise and what you feel is more appropriate. Um, same thing with the opposite side. So from an interior perspective, they'll have uh, flanking double hungs on either side of the, uh, the short sides of the, of the new uh, nursery. And then from the left side face, uh, from the left side of the home facing, we're just doing a, a two pairs of double homes stacked upon each other uh, as sort of a, a, a minimalist look or connection to the original home. The shape and form, the roof stays the same in both options. The, the size stays the same and the materials, uh, just the standard clabbered uh, to match existing uh, I don't think we would replicate the coins that are on the existing house just to distinguish its, its period. Um, but I'll, I'll defer to you in terms of what you feel is appropriate. If you feel like you need to have the coins there as well, uh, we, would, we would be amenable to that. And I look for your, your uh, support and opinions. May I ask a question? Sure, Ms. Piles. Um, the size of the addition, how long is it? Is it, it, on our page, it looks like 19 and a half feet. Does that sound right? Size of the addition is 19 foot six and a quarter. Thank you. Now, how much of the brick is covered up on that side? That's, that wall is not, the front wall is not lined up with where the brick stops and starts, is it? Correct, it's not in the uh, option. And it's the same in both options, I assume. It is. Uh, and perhaps uh, page A3 might address uh, Ms. Pyle's question. I'd have to remove this. Um, actually, let me see if I can get in. I think the as build has it shown. We um, shows the shows the original sunroom yeah, here we, and you can kind of get a sense that there's less that the, the addition comes to the behind of the chimney and so you, you are I, losing a certain amount yeah you should have the number yeah i'd also like to know i think the original i would i would think the original foundation on this property would be granite block but yeah, I, it's it's uh, it's uh, large scale blocks, but I don't stones. I don't think we can get a uh, veneer like that. So, so but I, I think you can, can get granite you veneer can. instead of field stone veneer. Is that what you prefer? I would vote for granite over because I believe I, if the if the foundation is granite, I vote for granite. You can get a four inch veneer the size of a capstone. We have it on our house right there. Okay. And it looks very real. I mean, it is real. <laughs> Fantastic. Anyway, back to the number here. So how much of the brick are we covering with this addition? Yikes. Six foot 10. We're covering up almost seven feet mm -hmm. and what would happen to your design upstairs and down if you took seven feet off of the 19 feet i mean i can do the math but you're 12 feet because you're pretty still a pretty big room but they are exposing some they are exposing half of that again yeah the... but it's, it's two stories covering up the veneer side of the house. I'm just saying 
is there something magical about a 20 foot long room? Can't we squinch it back a little more? Don't change the back measurement, just give it a little diet. But Jay, on the existing sunroom, is there exposed historic brick on the inside of that? There is. Okay. So you're pulling that back. I don't remember the dimension offhand, <clears throat> but you're going to re-expose 12 feet or so of. It's it's actually about, I believe it's about seven or eight feet of. of uh... You're going to re-expose seven or eight feet of brick that's currently covered up closer to the corner of the house, to the public realm. Correct. But your proposal is to cover up about seven feet on the second story. Correct. So it's kind of a swap. But you get some back on the first. You get some back at the public realm and you right. cover some up yeah. a little further back. And, and I would assume- I'm just gonna jump in and say, I really love option one. Can I, can I just say that because the roof line comes up to the underside of the sill, the, the area that we're exposing is actually larger than what yep. we're exposed now. Understood. I have a couple of other comments. Um, I I have a couple comments. One is on the height of the ridge, and I'm wondering if there was a reason the height was as high as it is. I'm wondering if that could come down a little bit. Um, the second one was the granite versus fieldstone foundation. Okay. And my third comment is, I believe option two sets off the 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 main house better, the main body of the house. It gives, when I'm looking at it, my my vision goes right to the main body of the house and this, the, the, the receding simpleness of the, the, the two stories is lessened with having just the one window on the first floor and one window on the second floor. Jay, this is a wonderful improvement. It's Thank a great you. option. Too. It is. It's wonderful. Both these are wonderful options. Yeah, made a huge difference. Well, I, I really appreciate that. Uh, let me answer Catherine's question. The, the reason why we brought that hip the way it is is because if I bring this down, then what's going to happen when I connect it to the main roof is I'm going to sort of like, you know, wedge style. Yeah, uh, you end up with a funny. Yeah, funny detail. Uh, actually, a horrible detail <laughs> yeah don't want horrible details <laughs> and i would also add that having only a single window on the front of the house will be slightly quieter for a baby yeah huh? not right. that that is at all pertinent back from the sidewalk yeah so i actually think they're going to really enjoy having their porch closer to the backyard they have a beautiful property huge beautiful property in the back and getting it back away from the sidewalk you can see the hedge right there in the front it's very close um, and, if, when you're walking along there you can write it look right in and see everybody in the house but um by moving this back i think it's going to make a make it a nicer porch for them too and, and a exposing quieter. those bricks all, all full two yeah. stories worth of bricks near yeah. the road just screams the wonderful federal style Yes. Oh, and I would like to add um, one last thing. I assume that when you take off the porch, there will be a little restoration that needs to, to happen to those bricks. Yes. And, so and what is the plan for that? That's a, I don't, I, obviously we're not gonna be pulling bricks out and trying to replace them. Um, uh, we'll have to do some maintenance repair. I don't know how they attach the uh the ex the exterior wall to that they may have just left it um uh flush or they may have put anchors in the in between the joints worst case scenario is that they ramp set uh nails through the through a stud uh into the brick and then we have some significant damage to those and uh, we'll certainly would address that when it, once that's exposed but unfortunately i just I, I can't see. Yeah, I can help you with that. Um, our house had a bay window put in back in Victorian era when that was the thing to do in the brick side. And when they took it out, maybe in the 1930s or so, um, they matched the bricks so beautifully, you almost never know it was there. If you look closely, you can tell the bricks a slightly different color. 
but bricks are lots of different sizes and the old ones tended to be much smaller than today's bricks like we'd think of for a pavement so yeah. come up and look at my house anytime you want i don't know what's holding them on the wall i can't tell you that part but it it's pretty easy to match the old bricks nowadays people carry them well there will be bricks removed to create openings into these and entrance and doorways into these right. There may be enough to do. So it'd that. be great to, to salvage those in preparation to patch and. That's and. a fantastic idea, Catherine, and uh, we should definitely um, uh, consider that um, when we when we remove that. I think the the idea is to maintain that brick wall even from the interior, uh, fr from the interior of the sun porch, but upstairs on the second level, if there's an opportunity to to. Uh, pull some of those out as replacements, then I think that would be okay. Unless you would prefer us to try to get a matching brick and we're, we're certainly happy with that too. I have a question about the coins. Why would you think to remove the coins, which I think are just part of an um, early federal house? It's just I, it's my understanding that we don't want to try to replicate a federal style addition, that we want to distinguish this as a period that, that, that's built in 2021, but it's proportionally sized and we're not, if I try to replicate those coins, I can do it, but it may not feel like an original federal style building with an addition off the side. It's nice to distinguish the original building. Yeah, I would agree with that as well. It's old. Yeah. Daniel needs to speak. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, the uh, yeah, sorry. I watched the video last time. I, I think this has come a long way. Um, I think this is a great compromise. This is a great way to balance um, the existing building and the historic, and and you know modernize it with the needs of the homeowner. The one question I have is um, your windows. Um, you have, uh, you list out the, uh, Marvin windows and then the cut sheets you have are ultimate casement and ultimate double hung G2s. Those are both clad windows. Um, oh, okay. so that's with a black exterior. Um, that's something I don't think came up in the last meeting. My apologies. If that was in the plan, I wasn't at the last meeting. I didn't have time to get Andrea in my comments. So apologies that it's coming up now, but that's something that jumped out at me, um, and I just wanted to make sure that that's correct, or if that's a typo in the package. I think that's a. I think that is, and I apologize. I think that is from our original uh, submission, where we were trying to be significantly more modern, modern in terms of the look, and trying to be uh, contrasting. So I think um, we we should probably revise the window to meet your uh, requirements. They should match the front of the house as close as you can get. In every detail. That that would be the intent. Yeah, definitely not black. Mm. Is there a preference on option one or two? I heard Justin say one. We keep looking at two. Well, I think actually uh, Catherine was persuading me away to option two. She drew me right in. <laughs> <laughs> we would really prefer option one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh we uh what can, can you elaborate on what uh what it is from one that over two that you're you're leaning toward because they're they're similar i'm just curious what parts of it that you lean towards i, I think this facade is just uh, super basic and uh, not very appealing to me i know it's traditional in the sense that it's double hungs and they're uh, but i like the, the style of option one, where it shows that it's distinctly different from that period. It has a little bit more separation from the original house and overall feel. Uh, and it provides them the window, uh, the, the amount of light that they need on the first level in contrast to the second floor. I have no objection to the side, the side view. If you prefer the side view on option one, I prefer the Front view on option two. That's, a, that's that, exactly what I was going to ask. That's, if there's that's a going to go to. Yeah. So, single window over single window. Right. Yes. Okay. Agreed. Yes. Okay, we can we can do that. So single window on the front over the single, and then leave the side facade like this. 
Yeah. Um, the back, the rear facade, would that be okay to keep the double window here? That's not in our purview. Okay. Right. Can I just jump in quickly? Sorry, it, the other one ran late, so I still have the baby here. But um, for the this first second option, uh, the first option we liked more Jay's right because of the windows for the nursery and the the bottom the bottom windows for the sunroom. We actually really do like the shuttered windows in the front, the single windows. Um, I was wondering what your preference is about doing the stone. I think in the first option, I really like that it differentiates from the main house with that little bit of stone veneer. It, it could be granite. I mean, we haven't settled on that, but is um, how do you guys feel about that stone veneer? Is it? I, I'm not seeing that. Where is it? Um, in the first option, in the bottom, if you see, <coughs> um, calls it out stone finish foundation. We were talking a five point one. Yeah. Okay. So it, yeah, that option we liked that it had that little um, section of the stone there to kind of differentiate. Um, and that doesn't go around to the front. It does. It, does. it would go to the front of the addition. Just oh, on the addition. Upper right corner. It looks like yep. there's quite a large amount of foundation. That there's a little extra de deep foundation happening there on the. Um, on the addition compared to the grade of the house's foundation and and that's the look you're trying to go for the land falling off a little bit more reveal a little bit more of a reveal yeah but I, I mean honestly I think Jay did a great job with both of these really the windows was our biggest thing on the side I'm happy to do the shuttered windows on the front I think they look yeah. great I just am kind of asking if what you guys prefer we liked that we would show a little bit more more reveal and some granite there. Um, We're also nervous about stone. I know I don't object in principle, but I think that I would want to see very detailed pictures and examples of the stone. <laughs> Not veneer. So could this be something possibly if if we do get to an approval once we get to choosing this, we could come in front of you guys and show you what the options are to get those approved. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yes, but I guess I want the commission to take note that it is a, an extra large foundation reve revealed um, and and know that it's going to, you know, not match at the same height at, as the main body of the house. It does emphasize that, doesn't it, to put stone there? Yeah, it does. And uh, the, the, the problem is, and you'll, if, uh, if you if, have been, been to the house, the floor level there is right at grade. So we really do need to bring up the foundation so that when th that whole sill around that sun porch is rotted out, the floor level is down. So we really do need to bring sort of the, the foundation so, up, even though it's not consistent with the existing structure, it just it's the, but if the, the rotting foundation tells the tale. You want to lift that up. Yeah. yeah, right now, like when you go try to transition, well, we keep it locked because we can't use it and it's not safe for the children, but you have to step down to get into there. There's two steps down. So I think we're just, we're trying to bring it up to, so it's just all the same level. So it's a seamless transition from the rooms. Me, Megan, the one thing I'd uh, suggest, it, I think it's something you guys can look at some more and, and bring back to us to keep this going forward. But um, definitely I would recommend taking some samples out and looking there. I just, I've seen sometimes when you look at it in renderings and it's all white like this and yeah. it's line work, seeing the actual granite next to the red brick, it, it kind of looks funny sometimes. So okay. I mean, certainly something you can look at with Jay and, and then, you know, maybe show us what you're thinking, but, okay. um, I think yeah, I mean, that, uh, if we just look thought, at it and we're like, oh, this doesn't look good against the red, we could have the option to just continue the siding down as well to the foundation. But I'm very happy to pull samples and look at them and come back to you guys and approve that part of it for yeah, review. I think we need to make that decision before we pour a foundation because that'll make things really difficult. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I can, but, we can do it before that as well, too. Yeah. Today, to be clear, What's proposed on the foundation is a veneer because you're pouring a concrete foundation. That's correct. It's a yes. So I just I want everyone on the commission to be aware yeah. this is a veneer foundation. But if a, a foundation feels like a very different situation than a wall. Yeah. 
But, and, uh, you know, but, products are changing now. So I think the board, from what I was hearing, you know, you can still do a brick shelf. I did it on my own home with a, with a, um, a river rock or uh, anything, uh, a, a true stone and make a, a traditional four inch veneer, which wasn't typical. It was a modification of when these buildings were built a hundred years ago, it was just a, a solid stone. So even those are sort of not traditional in the sense that they're put on a brick shelf or you can do what's now even more appropriate. It's the half inch veneer or not more appropriate, but uh, more industry standard. I think that's where the the, uh, the last applicant came in is that they're using too much of standard uh, materials rather than being clear on what the options are. So and I believe we've also approved, I think it was Home Meadows Lane, a brick veneer that... that uh, we did. Yes. And perhaps a brick veneer might address uh, Mr. Clark's concern about granite adjacent to brick. No, not a concern, just a just a food for thought. It's totally, you know, just just sharing that. But um, I guess what I'm hearing then is we don't really have the information to decide tonight, yeah. uh, regardless for this. So, you know, I guess I pose, you know, back to the applicant, which is if that's something you want, we couldn't we couldn't answer that question tonight. But if you go with without it, then we can probably keep this moving forward. Can I ask what the foundation of the original old front of the house is? Is that up on capstones, granite capstones? Yes, it is. Yeah. You don't, but it looks like you don't really see it when you walk by. I never noticed. You don't, you don't see much of it. You can, if you look, you can see a little bit of it. Um, on one of the sides, I think you can see a little more. Of it. it depends on which side of the house you're looking at or the front, but there's not too much revealed. Okay. Oh. Anyone else? I feel like we might be ready to make a motion on option one for the side elevation plus option two for the front hmm. elevation. Re is it reversed? No. Nope. I was correct. He's yeah, right. op option two for the front, option one for the side. Got it. And the applicant will come back with the final material selection or options for the veneer foundation stone. And windows. And before we vote, I'd like to say thank you again to Jay and the Rogers. I think yes. you heard us and um, I, I hope you're happy with it. I think your porch will be back in a more private area. I think you'll like that probably. And the baby will be back further away from the street, and, but mostly to expose that brick. Thank you very much. Well, Ms. Paz, I, I really, and I, what I echoed at the, I'll echo what I said at the beginning. This is my job. And I, re, I mean, I've, other than the actual structures, coming up with solutions is the yeah, best. Yeah, exactly. Really. And you did it. Yeah, this is wonderful. Thank you. Very happy. Very happy. And glad the process worked as imperfect as it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, does anyone want to make a motion? I'll yeah. Dan? Yeah, I can make one if you want. Um, so I uh, make a motion to issue a certificate of appropriateness for 667 Main Street in Hingham in the, uh, I forget what, oh, I do know. Tower yeah. Wilder. Yep, in the, uh, in the um, Tower Wilder Historic District, uh, based on the plans submitted uh, dated 729 um, with the following caveats that the left elevation proposed on drawing eight, A51 is the intended design and the front elevation on option two, A52 is the intended design and that the applicants will submit material selections related to the double hung windows and potentially uh, veneer uh, for the foundation on the addition. Is there a second? Second. Justin, how do you vote? I vote aye. Catherine? Aye. Carol? Aye. 
Dan. Hi. And it's an eye for me. Well, Can I change you. mine to an enthusiastic eye? <laughs> <laughs> me too. Beautiful. I'll take that. Yes. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. Yippee. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I think we are a lot happier with this option. So I appreciate you challenging us. You know, it, was, it was challenging for us, but we appreciate it. Thank you, oh, that's, thank that's you for saying that. That was unnecessary, but very appreciated. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank okay. you. Jay, thank you. Have thank a great night, everyone. Thank you very much. Good night. I can echo her sentiments. I was not happy with this board when you denied me the first time. Uh, <laughs> I was none too no, thrilled, no, but I'm I am happy uh, with how my project turned out. So oh, that makes us feel good. That's a great one. I'm not That's saying that I'm on the board with you. So <laughs> and there are actually there are a number of projects that have a similar sort of wonderful trajectory. We've gotten that response, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. We needed to have uh we need to sit in that a little bit today. It's a hard night. Tonight was a hard night. Yeah. yeah. So last item on the agenda is we want to try to have a business meeting in September after everyone's back to school and back to going to work for three or four or five days or whatever we're doing in this new world. Um <laughs> So yeah. wondering when, is that it? Well, our typical hearing is the 18th or something. September. Like 15th is the next one. 15th, yeah. 15th. I, I would say we should probably meet on a, a different night to have a business meeting. Yeah. And we could do it in person if you'd like. That'd be nice. It would be nice. So why don't I just, um, do you want me to just propose some dates? Does anyone have a night of the week that they absolutely can't do? Wednesdays are bad for me. Okay. Fridays are usually bad. <laughs> we won't make you come on a Friday at 6.30. Okay. <laughs> I was going to ask, is this a daytime or an evening meeting? Uh, it'll be 6.30 as usual. Okay. Anybody else other than Wednesday? Wednesday is not a day. So I would just say it. the 29th is not particularly good for me. That's a Thursday, but any other day is fine. Okay. Look in September, right? Yeah. I don't know. I have to see. Now that the, um, the school department has taken their meeting room and they're turning it into offices, so they will be using the meeting rooms in town hall. Mm -hmm. And so, and they have booked um, way ahead. So I'll have to see what the availability is. So now, I'll Andrea, make it, huh? I was just gonna say that just to make it more complicated, I'm only unavailable every other Wednesday. And I, <laughs> will, send you, I will send you right, which are, Wednesdays are bad. Right why now. don't I check with you? Okay, yeah, thanks, that's good. Sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, I, so I'll float some dates, all right, if that's all right with everybody. Yeah. Sure. Tuesdays and Wednesdays are good, whatever. Okay. I just, yeah, I can't do the 20th, but I'll email you. I have an ADU meeting that night. But, okay. Um. I know of a couple agenda items. One, I think, is windows. I think we need to have a very specific yeah. um, recommendation for windows. Yeah. <clears throat> um, there's other communities that kind of have a very prescriptive method in doing it, and I think we're a little bit more um, obscure, oblique, something. Like, you know, we definitely have some things that we want, but we've definitely approved a variety of different windows and different situations, but I think it would be good to be able to have a very direct kind of approval method <clears throat> on windows. We've been fighting or not fighting. Maybe that's not the right word, but, but um, energy efficiency has been a very big thing over the past couple of years, you know, regardless of, of, white papers and things like that, that say single glazed and storm windows are just as efficient. Um, you have ease of 
maintenance and cleaning and everything else. And now we're seeing a lot of clad. I'm definitely not a fan of clad. I don't think anyone is. Um, but I think we need to be very straightforward in our recommendations, almost kind of like a menu type option. Yeah. Confusing. Um, that's I bet a lot thing. of people would appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. It would save us so much time in these hearings too. Yes, it would. Um, <clears throat> I think that's one thing we should discuss. Another item is I think tonight was a lesson learned. Um, yep. I think where we're headed is not necessarily a good place. I'm personally, I'm not sure this is the pill to die on, but Andrea and I are going to fight that battle. Um, but I think we, we need to be a little bit more clear. And I think we've learned that both with 667 and the brick and 219 and the flagstone um, and others um, of, of what we're expecting. You know, we were kind of pointed in both of those instances to a hatch on a drawing. And for those of us who work in CAD and Revit, like Daniel and myself and Eric and others, hatches don't mean anything. Um, but that's what some of these applicants are relying on. Um, so I think we need to be a little bit more proactive in what our expectations are and state it up front and ask some of those questions. And it's difficult. Yeah. You know, it's not it can be burdensome on the process. To... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Catherine shared an email, I'm going to say six months ago, but it could be nine months ago about fence colors and other things that I think she wanted to discuss because we've had discussions about white fences and black fences and things like that. Um, we've seen with some of these more modern additions, such as on home meadows, such as the, um, I'm horrible with names and numbers, but such as the home that burned down on main street, some of these more modern homes that want to go with black or metal roofs or things like that. I think we should maybe have some discussions on, on that. Um, and what's in the guidelines, you know, the guidelines say it should look separate from the historic home. I feel personally, I feel like we try to approve things that blend in almost identical or very similarly to the historic home. And as an architect, that's not my first choice, but I'm one of eight now. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, I think that's something we should discuss. Um, anyone else? Yeah, I think you're, all of those are very important, but I also think there's a bigger picture problem. And that is, I don't ever want to talk to somebody coming before us trying to do something that's a real no-no. Why don't they know that? How do we get our information to homeowners before they spend thousands of dollars on architectural plans that we're not going to allow? How do we... Uh, is it a is it a yearly mailing to please call Andy if you're going to do anything or is it a, a pamphlet that goes out? My instinct tells me we need the Ten Commandments, <laughs> something that's so simple that you shall not use vinyl windows. You right, shall. So we got to get Moses. Too. Something <laughs> more obvious. I mean, we have this wonderful big book and all the answers are in there. All you have to do is spend the day reading it to find them. Right. Why can't we give something to the homeowner that at least sets them off in the right direction of before you order those final windows, please call Andrea or whatever we want them to do. Something that's the, the big informative picture to all of our rules. So that would be my choice. Yeah, Dan. I was just going to say, as somebody that went through that, I think that it's cumbersome. I think we could do a better job of maybe... Uh, I think there's too much burden on Andrea. She can't, there's so, you look at the number of applications that come through and how busy we are at times. I mean, there's there's a lot of burden on Andrea that I, I think that, you know, having that expectation, I think we need to do, make sure that we get good information on the website and try to maybe break it up into smaller bite size instead of saying, here's this whole document, 90% yeah. of it doesn't pertain to you. And I think Justin or um, Tracy's comment are like, just the windows alone, having a separate standalone document for windows and a flow chart and, and, and information in one easy to digest place is what we need. Um, and I, I think that's the other piece to that is, you know, 
where we got tonight was a good answer on this 667, right? They appreciated the process, but maybe, you know, it's a little tough that there almost needs to be like an education at the beginning, which is, you know, we're trying to, you know, protect and we're trying to modify, not because we're trying to be difficult, yeah. uh, but because we look at hundreds of homes and some of us do this for a living, we're trying to offer guidance. And I think maybe sometimes our the way we say it. it's not what we say but how we say it at times and we just you know people get fired up so i think we got to think about that side to it a lot the only other thing i wanted to suggest was i feel like sometimes we we run scattershot when we're i feel like we we got to try to probably be a little bit better of you know justin give us your thoughts dan give us your thoughts and go through each of us one at a time and then um try try to be a little more concise with it because i feel like we Justin says something and then we kind of go down that tangent and he said three other things. And, and so I feel like we got to try to be a little bit better giving that. Maybe Justin's the problem. I should get to well, I'm sorry. You're just in my upper left hand corner. So that's why I keep pointing to you. It's no, definitely right. Catherine's the problem. <laughs> I think and we also, also just, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think we also ought to um, get the source of the realtors. Realtors ought to know when they're marketing a house in a historic district, that there are some, covenants and there are some precedents and there are some bylaws that mandate what you can do and what you can't do so you know if you think you're going to change the whole house and you're in a historic district you should have forewarning and i think a realtor is probably um you know they're not going to want to do it because they're going to think it's an impediment yeah but they're I just think, trying to make the sale yeah. right um but no, but it's a good I think point disclosure is important i think disclosure is important it's fair um you know the people know what they might be getting into right and and there is a moment there when there's a licensed professional engaging in a transaction and that is uh as marianne observes a a, a a point in time where information like that can be before they sign the deed yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is something that i think it would be good to have is actually um the the map sometimes when i'm trying to figure out like where the districts end um it's great on gis because you can do the overlays and i think having some but it would be great to just have an entire rolodex in a, a place of these this is every house that is because when you go to search for it sometimes i think maybe some people looking at it they it's they have to do their own due diligence right when they buy a house I think having it in a very easy to find place or that you know, it gets on our website, every house listed, as opposed to being a PDF, the internet will search it. If somebody searches an address to Google a house before they buy it, it may actually pop up, hang them historic districts commission. It'll be a red flag. Yeah. Red flags. In them. Right. I'm sure when I bought our house, I would, it never would have occurred to me to look whether I was in a historic district or not, would, would not have had any and as you drive around town, you see things going on. You say, oh, they're not supposed to do that. But am I in a historic district or are they OK? Right. Yeah, I was I was driving up Lincoln Street just the other day towards the Starbucks, you know, away from town. And there's definitely houses there that are historic. And I saw some additions. I was like, how did that get approved? And I'm like, well, they're not in a historic district. They're just on the registry. Yeah. Well, same thing even with like in like Faring Road it stops a few houses past me and everything over on the Derby side, none of it's, none of it was part <laughs> of the, the district. So it's, it's confusing. And some houses might have placards, but not be in the district and vice versa. Well, that's what I saw. I saw the placards and I was like, well, yeah, I'm outside the district. So but we need a meeting. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and another agenda item for the meeting enforcement. Yeah. I, I told Andrew about this. I, our other house on the Cape, uh, I was looking at the Cape Cod Times, which is a waste of time, but there was a little article about the historic districts for Route 6A it goes from town to town. It's not in one town, all along 6A, all those wonderful old houses. And they were having a meeting with the town lawyers from those different towns and some other expert. And they were talking about just, you know, how do we get sued and how do we not get sued? And what are your rights and what aren't your rights? And I've always felt we needed that, that anyone who comes before us and says, we'll see you in court, it's like, you know, what are we doing to the town? We need to know for sure what we're allowed to do and not do. I mean, I know Andrea knows it. <laughs> let's, let's not get the town sued. Andrea, what, I would love to know 
at that meeting um, or now if you have it off the top of your head, how often or have you ever heard of, have we ever issued fines? We've never issued a fine, have we? Oop, you're muted. Did she fall asleep? No, no. Oh, is she? <laughs> there you go. No, we did. Um, we have in the past issued a couple of fines. It's very rare, but we have. Did they pay them? How did it go? Oh, they pay them. Um, <laughs> what happens if they don't pay them? Well, we haven't hit that yet. I mean, you know. Hey, do you don't... get to put a lien on the house? No. Probably encumbers the deed somehow. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Hmm. We can't do that. But um, so far we've been fortunate. People have paid up, you know. And what have been the, the cases of people taking you to court? Have there been a couple of those? Oh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, we've been sued before, um, but I can't remember the last. The last one was well, mostly it's it's uh, the historical commission. Sometimes um, we've got a suit against us now. Um, so. But, and the, the town lawyer goes with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they deal with it. So anything else for the agenda for September? Here, I think here. Is it? Hey, I have one question. Miss Tracy, did um did uh, the is there another A and R submitted for the parish house? That did not get submitted yet. So we were, we were told one was coming, but it did not arrive. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. I, I was out of town. What happened with the last one? Uh, they didn't, the planning board denied it. Yeah. Uh, they actually, it was continued, Andrea, and then um, oh, sorry. The, the applicant withdrew. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> it was kind of like the, uh, the battle of attorneys, right? Mm. Would you characterize that, Miss Tracy? Yeah, it was a very brief discussion. There were some outstanding issues that needed to be looked into, and um, it was continued. And before it got to the next hearing, uh, they withdrew. Sounds like a riveting watch to go back and find. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Okay. Is well, thank you. Thank so you. Like a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Adjourn. And you have to roll call. So I think Justin was the first. Carol was the second. Aye. Dan, how do you vote? Aye. Justin? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Carol already voted. It's aye for me. So meeting adjourned. Okay. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye.